address. Now, uh, some companies have been dynamically uh, critical for the change that we saw in not just the uh, past two years, but the past decade, actually. And uh, one such company is uh, Siemens. And uh, we have here uh, Mr. Amal Jaiswal from uh, Siemens, who's heading the digital enterprise business to uh, get, give us a headway into some of the most dynamic technologies and uh, the uh, offerings that they have for our segment. So uh, Mr. Amal Jaiswal has a decade of experience in various industries such as HVAC automation, real estate, and IoT. Currently, he is the head of digital uh, buildings in Siemens India. As uh, aligned with the industry that he's a part of, Amal is passionate about digital transformation and works towards enabling customers build smart infrastructure to enhance workspace experience and drive sustainability. He has worked across many verticals to ensure his customers' KPIs are met with the help of solutions designed and customized for them from industry to industry. Uh, with a rich background in emerging technologies, Amal has uh, channelized his strength towards creating future-ready buildings and spaces with the help of IoT and digital solutions. With this, I would love to call Amal on. <laughs> Morning, everyone. This is great to uh, meet everybody three-dimensionally, I think, after so long. Uh, we are so happy to be part of this event today. Um, thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, my name is Amal. Uh, like uh, Ashmi mentioned, I head digital enterprise business. And I'm so excited to talk to you about our version of the future of work. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Renuka, for setting the tone so beautifully. Um, I, I couldn't agree more with some of the things that Renuka said on how uh, the, the future of work is about people, it's by the people, and the technology becomes merely an enabler, but it definitely plays a very central role in terms of how we are building future workspaces. To quickly walk you through, right, uh, of course, most of you would know Siemens. Uh, we've been in the business for over a decade. We are more than 175 years old. And I, from an employee's perspective, I feel very proud to be part of a company who has continuously evolved and kept up with time uh, to come up with solutions that are mostly ahead of its time. Today, if you look at our, our industry, we also have come a long way. Uh, buildings were merely bricks and mortar probably 20 years ago, uh, but with the help of automation coming in, uh, and now in 2020, buildings being connected, is something that is a two-year-old technology. But going forward, what will we see in the next decade is the question or is the discussion of this particular forum uh, today. And our version of that is more employee-centric. As you can see, buildings are producing a lot of data. We want to see how we can channelize that information into actionable insights while also empowering employees to take control of their physical workspace, which is where you see a small mobile phone there, right? We want to see how we can build a layer of user interface for employees to take charge of everything they kind of interact with with their physical workspace, which could be temperature, their rooms and their desks, their lighting, their work, work requests, and so on and so forth. Essentially, the idea is to build human-centric workspaces with the KPIs that Renuka rightly put uh, are more towards retention, attraction of the right kind of talent, and also pro improving productivity once employees are working out of offices. But how can we do that, right? How do I empower each and every person who walks into the building to take charge of their physical control, right? There are so many subsystems in a particular building. Are we, are we being too ambitious? Are we, are we really sure this can be done? And we did take a step back, right? We wanted to see how we can accomplish this. And we said that there are three pillars to making this happen. There is people, there is spaces, and there is infrastructure. I think we have done a great job as far as infrastructure is concerned. Over the last decade, we've been able to bring down the electricity and the energy cost down to roughly about 28 euros per square meters on utility. But the real potential lies in space, which is actually 10 times more expensive than energy. And what's 100 times more expensive is the cost of having great people in your team. So we felt like the opportunity while having sustainability as a core is important. There is still a lot of opportunity in terms of improving space utilization and also people and productivity. 
And I think that's where most of the businesses and companies here are striving towards getting maximum utilization out of. Uh, so our idea is to have these things connected, right? People, spaces, and infrastructure must be connected. People from a user-centric standpoint, space from a flexibility standpoint. We all know about hybrid working cultures now. We want to have real estate to be more flexible. And of course, infrastructure keeping energy and sustainability to its core. But that's easier said than done because there are so many subsystems in a building that are coming at play. So how do we do that, right? We thought we should have a single platform to be able to integrate the three, the people, the physical infrastructure, and the real estate. We want a single platform to be integrating all of this. But then again, how do I do that? Because if I take a step back, in a typical building, all these subsystems are present, right? Each of these boxes represent one subsystem, which means there is a huge volume of data generated. There's a huge variety of data which is generated at a very high velocity. So Amal is talking about having one platform that can talk to all of these subsystems. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, right? Because each of these subsystems have their core. So for example here, the comfort would be having the BMS as a core, or lighting applications, or fire alarm systems speak a different language. Emergency lighting speaks a different language. IP audio speaks a different language. So how do I interact with all of them with a single platform? And also integrate people into this equation. Also integrate space utilization into this in, in, uh, integration. So our solution was that to have an integrated platform to be able to make one single layer of software which can be able to communicate all these different languages with all these different industries, third-party subsystems combined. And then we also wanted to sort of bifurcate the two. We said that we will have the user-centric use cases up top and the infrastructure coming at the bottom. So eventually what we wanted to do was to have three layers comprising of this smart office infrastructure. Layer number one is user interface. We want to make a layman app. Nobody needs to know anything technically. All they need to know what they want out of their workspace. We want to build a user interface which can help employees interact with their workspace. That's layer number one. Layer number two is traditional, where I have my people counting sensors for space utilization, lighting sensors, my IBM is coming in, smart washrooms coming in, anything on the infrastructure end is layer number two. And the third layer is where all these three things come together. I have the user expectation coming from the top, the infrastructure conditions coming from the bottom, and the IT services, the smart layer, being the data lake, the API, and the brains of this entire operation. This is where we felt that the story of smart infrastructure gets completed from a smart building perspective. And we tick mark all the boxes, people, spaces, and infrastructure. Each employee wants, I want to know what temperature they like, what work requests they are raising, I want to know what rooms they prefer over other rooms, I want to know how many desks are being utilized. I want this information out of the fingertips of employees. So how are we going to do that, one? Second, we want to talk to you about a breakthrough IoT sensor. We, we decided that while we are talking about these things, we need to also keep up our hardware infrastructure, right? We want more sensors, I would say rather less sensors doing more work. So we came up with an IoT sensor size of a 10 rupee coin, which can do a lot more than just sense one or two parameters. And then we'll talk about the middle layer in the end to wrap this up, starting with workspace experience apps. Um, these are workspace experience app. Every employee gets to download this. Either they are an Android user or an Apple user. They can go ahead, download it from their respective app store. Um, companies could, can obviously brand it as per their uh, branding, and, and a lot can be done from these apps, right? From having a home screen here, which integrates their canteen management, parking management, visitor management, or any HRMS tools or IT tools. Everything sits on the palm of the employee's uh, own personal mobile app. Here it's like a command and control center for the employee, for all the softwares that they want to interact with when they are talking to a particular building or talking to their infrastructure. Furthermore, they can do meeting room bookings, they can do test bookings. These are obviously very important today's day and age, especially when we are trying to enable hybrid working strategies, trying to right size our real estate. We want data of the exact utilization of desks so that I can take more strategic decisions about right sizing real estate. We can navigate our way through office, work orders, uh, washrooms, visitors. Two of my favorites are on the end there, temperature control and lighting control. I absolutely love those two use cases, wherein we are able to have an AI engine 
in, in the palms of all the employees so that they can then put in their preference, warm my space, cool my space, and, and, and the software will be able to coagulate all the preferences to determine what the exact uh, set point of the BMS should be at that uh, point in time. We are able to determine that and therefore we are able to reduce 83% uh, uh, increased satisfaction and reduce almost 60% hot and cold calls, right? Again, about empowering employees to be able to take charge of their thermal environment. We can do that for lighting. Uh, we can do that for room booking. We have done, and I would encourage all of you to come back and see the demo of this as well, wherein once you book a room and let's say somebody doesn't show up, the sensors turn off the lights, turn off the AC, and also auto-release the meeting room for other people to use them. Uh, we can also integrate it to your Outlook calendars. Here is another use case where, let's say, a fire breaks down in the building. The BMS does its own course. The fire alarm system does its own uh, SOPs. And the building also pushes a message to the employee saying, evacuate, here is the nearest ex exit. So all these use cases can be built in once we have the employees on the same platform as the infrastructure rests on the building, right? Which is where we've been able to convert this as a layer for user interface. And we have been able to do all of this. We can call elevators using apps. We can book a meal using apps. We can book parking spaces using apps. And all this is happening with a single pane of glass from an employee's perspective. In a nutshell, uh, the day of an employee in smart office looks pretty interesting, isn't it? He books a desk when he comes uh, to office, access parking, access control, elevator, desk booking, locker room booking, uh, uh, setting the ideal thermal and lighting environments. Uh, and so on and so forth, right? From a wayfinding perspective to navigating, sanitizing, reporting an issue, everything is happening through a single pane of glass. Uh, this was the user side, yeah? We've got this nailed and we've done this in many locations here in India. But we want to do also something different on the hardware infrastructure end, right? Which is where the breakthrough IoT sensor comes in, which again is at the booth at the back. Please do come and have a look. This is what we call as the enlightened. It's a breakthrough IoT sensor, which is the size of a 10 rupee coin. In fact, it's lying in my pocket right here. Uh, this becomes my entire lighting management system. Yeah? Usually, in a lighting management system, you would have to have sensors, cables, DALI controllers, modules, switching modules. All of this is packed in this tiny sensor here. I'm literally carrying the LMS in my pocket right now. But this sensor can do a lot more than just LMS. Yeah? This sensor has a Bluetooth in it. You can use it for wayfinding applications. Uh, it has a motion sensing capability, so it can do real estate analysis. You can, you can find out what your meeting room utilizations are. You, you, we have a desk sensor version as well. You can find out what your desk utilizations are. And we have dashboards to show you um, your space utilization. The sensor can also sense temperature. It can do lighting, and it can also control HVAC based on occupancy, something that we have never done before from a BMS standpoint. And all of this is packed in this tiny little guy here. It's absolutely revolutionary. It's something that has never been done before. We are saving almost 20 to 30 percent on HVAC, and we are saving close to 50 percent on lighting while providing the right experience to employees, because this can also integrate to the app that I showed you earlier for auto-release of meeting rooms and things like that. We are able to show dashboards, of course, which will give us insights on what my energy consumptions towards lights are. Uh, we are able to show you dashboards on how we can control them better, the right scenes, the right settings, and so on and so forth. And we'll be able to also give you space utilization insights like these. So let's say you want to know what um, each department utilization is in case you want to build them respectively, we can do that. We can give you heat maps in terms of space utilization again and, and show you what, how much of your real estate is being, being used. Very important in a hybrid working environment that we are trying to strive here. These are some of the dashboards that you can see that the sensor can generate on the back end. So we can tie it up with our app as well. To, to know what the exact utilization on desk level is. So people may book a desk but not show up. Is that considered as utilized or underutilized? We can do that with the sensor to make sure that the data is accurate. Here is an example of a Fortune 10 company who felt like their office spaces were overcrowded. But then when they installed this sensor and they found out that their utilization was actually only 22%. With the help of rearranging their office space and reconfiguring their real estate, they were able to shoot that up to 50% and they saved more than $380,000 on uh, real estate and leasing cost. In a nutshell, one sensor 
is able to do lighting, HVAC, space utilization. We can do wayfinding, real-time location services. One platform for all of these things, and we call it the Enlighted here. This ties with the final layer and the third one, which is the, the, the IoT layer, which sits in the middle, right? All of the data that my building produces has to be shown on a single pane of glass. My operators and maintenance guys cannot be looking at 10 different screens managing and operating 10 different subsystems. It has to be routed through one single pane of glass. And this is the back end. So we saw the single pane of glass in the beginning for the employees, and here is the back end single pane of glass, where you can see all my facilities and all the subsystems on those facilities can be mapped and compared. You can analyze data, you can run FDD analytics on it, you can run predictive maintenance analytics on it, and a lot more. Uh, these are things that are up and running. These are some of our customers. But at the end of the day, uh, the solution has to be holistic, yeah? So we have a front end with the help of an app. We have the right hardware to sit in the middle, and the layer at the end, the IoT layer, to tie everything together to make sure all of those value propositions that we set out in the beginning, the people, the spaces, and the infrastructure are set um, and checked like, check boxes. Um, with that, uh, I, I want to say thank you to everyone for your attention. Um, we wanted to achieve user centricity, flexibility, and sustainability, and we are very excited to be uh, able to get opportunities to partner with uh, guys like you and also help spread the word, because uh, I think these are technologies which are very new, and, uh, but as rightly mentioned in the beginning, the pandemic being accelerating these tech, I think we want to make more noise about them. We want more projects like this to be rolling out. Thank you once again for your attention. Uh, we'll be very happy to host you at the back at our stall for more questions and demos. Thank you. Thank you.